Variables in Figma are probably more powerful than you could imagine. For an example, we could translate our variables to CSS frameworks when going from the design to the development process. Let's take a look at the possibilities and how you could use variables everywhere and build a complete variable based design system. We'll use this banner for an example and apply our variable based design system. To get started, I'm going to open up my variables manager. Now, if I click down, you're going to see I have all these different collections. These are going to be the tokens and values that we're going to be adding inside every single web design project. Every time we're building a site, for an example, you're going to have gaps. Well, we're going to label the gaps the same that they are going to be labeled on the website when we are creating our variables and classes on the website. And we're also going to set it up for desktop and mobile using modes. This is going to help out when we are using clamps and creating fluid spacing. Let me show you a good example of this. We'll go over to our spacing and you see here we got our groups from section XXL, XL, L, and all the way down. And these are just our t-shirt sizes, which I use for my class naming. So for section XXL, you're going to see we have our top and bottom padding, which is 200 pixels. Of course, we're going to convert that into RAM on the website, but unfortunately, at this time, Figma doesn't have REM values yet. But when we get to development, we know to convert them. And then we got the left and right. Now on the left, I'm going to have 80 pixels, which I believe is 5 REM for desktop. And then when it gets to mobile, we're going to have it shrink to 20. Let's take a look at a website and show you exactly how this translates. Here's my site here on Bricks. I'm using Core Frameworks. And I got classes. Let me add a class to my section. And I'm going to search for section and you're going to see my class names come up. The class names are identical to what I am building here inside of my groups. So I'm going to go over here and select a section XXL and let's take a look at the values. Let me unlock it so we can see it. And then we can see in our spacing, our top and bottom is 12.5 rem, which is 200 pixels. Now I could create this into a variable that is fluid and I actually should to match this design system here. And I do have that set up for the left and right. You can see I have a variable set here. Now that variable is going to be found inside of my framework and I'm going to have 80 pixels on the desktop sides and 20 on the mobile. In this framework, it automatically translates to RAM using clamps, keeping everything fluid. So you see what we're doing here. We are making our variables in our groups and we are going to match them to our website. Now let's close this. I am going to go over to my banner section and here, instead of manually inputting the sizes for our spacing, I am going to select on the variables, search for my section, and I'm going to match it to my section XXL group. This one is going to be right and left, and I'm going to do the same for the top and bottom. Now, if this needs to be changed, I would just go to my variable manager. Let me shrink this up so we could see it. I'm going to go to my section XXL and let's say I want to make this a lot smaller so it's visually easy to see a change. Well, I change it to 120 and it adjusts. And if we are going to do that and build this in, out into the site, then we would do the same thing here. We would go in and change our top and bottom to what we change inside of Figma. This will keep everything aligned easily from design to development. That is one of the superpowers of variables. The other is being able to manage everything back here. For an example, let's take a look at our typography. Now we have our font family right here. If I wanted to change this and let's say I put in just, I'm just gonna put in enter because it's easy. You'll see the text changes right away we change it all in one space same thing with the font size maybe i want this one smaller it is changed inside here and well everything is connected to our styles so the old school way of doing this is just to create styles you would create something like what i have here for this header xxl and you would just set up all your values here. And then every time you would have to change it, adjust it, you would have to go in and adjust here. But now everything is connected to a variable. We could take it a step further. Unfortunately, for our letter spacing, we can't use percentages yet or for our line height. Hopefully that does change inside of the future. Then we could take it 
even further. But now let me show you how to set this up. We're going to do it for this button right here. So for our button sizes, we do have our text styles and then our text styles are connected to our variables. And let me see here. Okay. We got our button text small, which is connected to that text style, but let's take it a step further because we do have this top and bottom padding in our button frame. Instead of just manually putting this, what we want to variable, I try to put variables everywhere and that helps to look for opportunity. So the opportunity here would be to go to your variables. Let's create a new collection. We're going to call this one buttons, go ahead and create, and we're going to start off with numbers. Now let's create groups for each one of these. I am going to right click and then select on new group with selection. And then I'm going to call this button large. I'm going to go top and bottom, and this will be our top and bottom padding. And let's go ahead, give it a value of let's say 16 pixels for the top and bottom. Let's go ahead and duplicate this variable. This one we're going to call right left. You could call it sides. You could do whatever you want, but I'm going to just call it that for real, making it easy to understand. Okay. We got 40 pixels right and left. Now let's duplicate this a few times. Let's go in and rename them. I'm going to use my t-shirt sizes, large, medium, small, and let's go and adjust our values for this one. I'll make 12 pixels top and bottom 32 pixels, right and left. I'll do the same thing in small this time. I'm going to make this, let me make it eight pixels top and bottom, and I'm going to make it 24 right and left. You see, there we go. And then extra small, I'm going to make this four pixels top and bottom, and then this will be just 12 right and left. So let me go ahead and close this. I'll go over to my right and left. I'm going to search for buttons and now we can look for our groups and I'm going to make this a small. So I'm going to go right and left for the small and then I'll do the same thing for the top. Choose button small and then I'm going to go top and bottom and we could take this a step further. Let's go back over to our variables. I'm going to go back over to the small one and I am going to right click and duplicate it. But this time I'm going to call this border radius and I'm going to put in my value. Now I do have a collection already for my borders. Let me see. It's right here. I have my border widths and then also border radiuses. These are the variables. So I'm going to connect this variable to my this is like a token right here for our buttons. We're going to connect it. So I'm going to select on my variables. Let's put in, I'm just going to put in a radius to easily filter it. And we'll make this a small. So we're going to connect the small to the small button. We could go to the radius in our button. Let me select on button. And then we could choose button small. You're going to see our border radius, which is connecting to that variable. If we needed to change it, well, I just go over here to my borders, to my radius. And then I'm going to look for the one that I am using, which is a small. And again, this is the reason why this is important and why we're going to do a separate it's because we have the clamp. We have desktop and mobile. Now, if you do not see this option for modes, that's probably because you're using the free version. This is only available for the pro version, but check this out. Remember the sections, how it had 80 pixels on the left and right 20 on mobile. Well, let's go to our swatch right here. This is for our modes for our variable mode. We're going to go over to our spacing and then to mobile and you're going to see everything flip into mobile mode. So when we do turn this into our mobile version, it's going to make everything a whole lot easier. And the idea behind this is to spend time building it up, continue to refine it. Because even though I've been working on this for a long time, I keep finding more opportunities to improve, especially when I do go from design to building a website. I always see how I could do this just a little bit better. Constantly do that. And you spend all this time setting it up, but it is going to save a lot of time later. Keep your designs consistent and keep the design 
and the development consistent and congruent with each other. I feel like we're just scratching the surface here on what we could be doing with variables. The more I dive into it and update my own design system, the more possibilities I find where I could update it and make it even more congruent with the way that I am building my websites, especially when we're gonna be using frameworks inside of, well, Bricks, we're already using frameworks inside of there, but coming up pretty soon inside of Elements or with the version four editor, we're gonna be using frameworks as well, which means if you are using page builders like these, understanding and really utilizing variables inside of Figma is gonna be very, very instrumental in your overall design to development workflow. Well, if you have any questions, definitely drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on building variable-based design systems inside of Figma. And if you did find value in this, do not forget that good YouTube stuff. You know what's up. Like and subscribe. I do appreciate the support, and I'll see you back in the next one.